What is God's will for all believers out there? Is there a common will for all of us? What does the Bible say about what you and I ought to do? What does the Bible say about matters of life, about what we need, and about our desires? Good morning and welcome to the Friday morning devotion and prayer. Before we begin, I would like to ask each and every one of us to please share this video to as many people as possible and bless them through the studying of God's Word. One more thing, may I ask you to please share with us your prayer requests. Please put it at the chat box or send us a PM and we would love to pray with you. Praise God. To answer the questions in the beginning of our devotion, I would like to invite all of you to please open your Bible and read with me from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. That's verses 16 to 18 of the fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians. And let us read together. Rejoice always, pray continuously, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Friday morning. And we ask, O Lord God, for your guidance through the power of your Holy Spirit, your wisdom, to, to help us, Lord, understand your words. And we pray, Lord, that you give us the power to do them according to your will. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. In the passage that we just read, the Apostle Paul says that this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Yes, it is important for us to know that each one of us, you and I, have a specific purpose of God's calling. You and I were, were called for His specific works. And though that is true, it is also important, equally important, that you and I be reminded that there is a common will for all Christians, for all believers out there. Praise God. And here, we are reminded about these three things that God desires or ordains for us. In fact, these are all action words. Action words, something active that we must all do as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. So no matter what background we are, whether we are a new believer or have been one for a very long time, a poor man or a rich person, male or female, young or old, these three actions must be common among all of us. In fact, whether you are experiencing the greatest trials of your life, or riding on your spiritual highs, these three actions need to be part of our daily Christian life. Let me share with you action number one. It says in verse 16, Rejoice always. If you, you and I, are going through troubling times, difficult trials, painful situations, how can we actually truly rejoice? Is it really possible? It seems impossible for one to rejoice if he, he is going through tough times, isn't it? Yet the Apostle Paul says, rejoice always. Always. This means at all times, on all occasions. The Amplified Bible puts it this way. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Now that is important. That is to anchor why you are rejoicing. To delight 
in your faith. Ah, despite the difficulties, troubles, and trials one is facing, the believer can still truly rejoice in the Lord when he, she delights in his or her faith. All of us can still experience great pleasure and rejoice because the Lord has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light from the clutches of sin and death into spiritual freedom and eternal life. Praise be unto our Lord that despite experiencing hardships and troubles, we have an eternal hope as we hold on to our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. In fact, Peter in 1 Peter 1 verses 3 to 6 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, by who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. And he says, In this you rejoice, though for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whew, that's quite long. But please consider these words. In this you rejoice. What What is the reason why you rejoice? That you were born again already. And you have an inheritance that is imperishable, unimper- uh, imperishable undefiled, unfading, and kept in heaven for you and I. Praise God. So rejoice always despite your difficulty. Praise God. Action number two is pray continuously or pray continually. That is found in verse 17. Think about it. How can one truly pray continually? Surely all of us need to do something at some point. We all need to work. We all need to eat, to bathe, or even to sleep. So how can we actually pray continually? The idea of praying continually isn't about the physical non-stop prayer, like say a prayer chain, that you, you really don't stop praying. Rather, it is the automatic reflex in our spirit, in our in, inside of us, to always utter spoken or silent words to God throughout our conscious times in the day. That is a constant communication being in connection with God throughout our, throughout our conscious day and probably even our in unconscious uh, uh, day, um, uh, state. This is what it means to be always connected with God. Prayer isn't a one-way thing, by the way. It is not only about asking and requesting, not about supplication. Instead, instead, or that's just one aspect of prayer. Instead, the other side of prayer actually is as equal as is as equally important to supplication and requesting. And this is to ask God constantly for His will at every moment, to fully depend on Him through His wisdom, His guidance, and His power. And that is, of course, through His Holy Spirit. Amen? Praise God. So allowing the Holy Spirit to communicate to us, receiving and agreeing to His counsel, and doing what He pleases, is a form of prayer and a wonderful result of prayer altogether. 
Praise God. The Amplified Version says, up in verse 17, Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. Be unceasing, non-stop, and persistent and in prayer. Now, let me try to explain being persistent. Being persistent means to continue Continue to firmly uh, to continue firmly in prayer, in spite of difficulty or opposition. That should be our attitude towards praying to God. Even if we don't feel like praying, we pray. Even if we feel God isn't listening to our prayers, we pray. Even if things seem hopeless. We pray. Action number three. Give thanks in all circumstances. And that could be found in verse 18. It is naturally easy for us to give thanks to God when things go our way, isn't it? The way we desire to be, the way we plan our life. But we know that life is not always going to be bliss. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself said, in this world, you will have trouble. But in the same line, Jesus Christ also assures us. He says by saying, But take heart, I have overcome the world. And that is all the reason for us to always give thanks to Him. Always giving thanks to God, no matter what situation we are in. Praise the Lord. The Amplified Version says, In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. In the same way that we constantly pray and continue to pray, we ought to constantly and continue thanking our God. The idea of giving thanks to God isn't only when we feel like giving thanks to Him, but must be continuous. This means you and I must have a conscious effort to thank the Lord. It needs a lot of practice. Yes, reading God's Word actually will help us remind ourselves about our blessed position in Christ. And it would greatly encourage us to, even despite our broken or heavy hearts, to thank Him regardless of how we feel at that very moment. In Philippians 1, 6, the Apostle Paul thanks God for the believers in Philippi saying this, being confident of this, that He who began a good work in you, will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. This is a wonderful reason to always thank the Lord in all situations. Amen? Because we know that God will continue to do His good work in us until our Lord Jesus Christ returns in the future. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I hope you are blessed by our devotion this morning and I pray that you and I will constantly rejoice in the Lord, constantly rejoice in our faith and constantly pray and constantly thank Him for everything that we have, we are and we are in. We love, uh, we love to hear from you. Please comment at the comment section and I hope to see you next week once again. Let us pray in closing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful devotion that you have given us to, in speaking to us, Lord, through your word, through the power, through the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you guide us and give us the strength, Lord, to do what we just have learned. And we pray, Father God, for each and every person here to encourage them, to strengthen them, and to give them, Lord God, the wisdom to discern. And we pray, Lord God, that in everything that we do, that your name alone is lifted high, is glorified. 
In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, church, and see you next week.